The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Our next presentation will be by my co-organizer for this uh, two sessions, Mohammed Sanibi from Queen's University of Belfast, who will be talking about 3D printing of concrete fresh properties and rheology. Thank you, Sean. My presentation it will be focused on the fresh property and rheology of 3D printing, and also as introduction, maybe already mentioned about the advantages of uh, of 3D printing. First of all, all of us who are here, this is for concrete. We love concrete. That's some some figures. Just I look at just uh, two three weeks ago. This is every five minutes. We have more than a thousand people come born, and we need to have more uh, housing, more infrastructure. And we look at this is estimation the production of concrete. We almost this is we are consuming this is almost two ton one inhabited. That's mean to resolve to this demand. We need to use of course the robotic to increase the productions of 3D printing. That's the as mentioned before. This is the conventional. A conventional construction of the building, it's labor intensive, and also there is a problem with it can take more time for health and safety and insurance, waste and also climate change or carbon footprint, and modern slave. That is very important because we are going to reduce the labors. In some countries, this is, there is modern slave, like in Middle East, there are people that are suffering working at the site. Now, with the robotic, we can avoid and also we can reduce the, the corruption during the the process of tendering and so on, and high cost. And the solutions, of course, it's part of it, of course, this is it's to use the robotic, as we show some videos we use already to produce our cars, planes, uh, mobiles, TV, and so on. And that one, it's going to be, this is as uh, it's written here, this is not all of us, not all robots uh, would, be, would be good to live with, but the robot, like other, uh, it's uh, like other tools invented by human, and can help us and or arm us. But they are not going away. They are going to be here. We are going to use them. Even some countries are thinking this about the robot. They have to pay taxes in Switzerland because they are taking job from us. They have to pay tax on their income. Now, as we said before, some advantages uh, for the benefits of 3D printing. Of course, this is higher customized. We can have flexibility, architectural, as we saw some videos. And also, it's very low construction waste. This is, uh, of course, as we show some figures about the reduction of uh, formwork, which usually between 30 to 60% of overall cost. Reduce the need of more labor. As I said, this is health and safety because there is more people injured in construction compared to other industry and it's cost money of course for uh, for insurance and also for health and uh, for uh, for uh, NHS national health service reduce the time for construction as I said before I as it mentioned this morning the application of uh, 3d printing here this project in University of Lofferberg and uh, this is the first bench uh, made with 3d printing I have chance to I was external examiner of a PhD student when I finished, I, I took this photo. It's a beautiful bench made with 3D printing. Now, I will focus more on, as I said, in my investigation work, what we have done on the, how we are going to look at the, how the mixed uh, composition parameter variables affecting the 3D printing mortar dislike. Replacing cement with fly ash, silicate fume, the SP, the fibers, and also the uh, different type of VME on the workability, on the rheology, and opening time, or uh, by using just simple tests, in fact, in the lab. And in this investigation, we uh, investigate water cement ratio, uh, water to cement issues material 0.5. We replace cement by fly ash 25%. 
mixes with uh, silicate fume 8% and also uh, reduce uh, uh, superclassism from 0.55% to 0.28%. Uh, we use uh, polypropylene fiber. We increase it from 1.2, double it and triple it three times. And also we use two types of VME, diotin gum and uh, nanoclip to look at how affecting the fresh property, the rheology and also the, the extruded mortar. Material we use, as I said, it's uh, ordinary Portland cement, uh, class 42.5, and we use fly ash, silicate film. We use sand, save on 1.18 mm, uh, mm. superclaster, it was polycarboxylic, and uh, as I said, VME, it was diotin gun, and second one, it's nanoclay, and polypropylene fiber having 6 mm, the land. And what we have done here, you can see the list of the tests. We, to measure the sample test, we measure the, the workability, consistency using the flow table, and we use the penetration, and we will show later on how it's correlated well with uh, the fresh property with slum flow. And we try also to link, this is the, to uh, empirically to evaluate the value of the yield stress from using the measurement of cylindric measurement. We try to use, uh, in our case, the, our viscometer, but didn't work, but as the mix is quite, all the mixes are quite little stiff. And we look at the extrudability by using the gun, gun test at different time. And also we look at this at the build-up rate of the cement-based material when it was uh, the, the limit stiffness of the extrude during the time, the opening time, or how we call it, and we measured it every 15 minutes with different mixes, like using fly ash, silicate fume, fibers, increase the fiber, super processor, or uh, with uh, two types of VME. Now, some results here on the effect of the fly ash on the, the mortar 3D printing. Uh, you can see here, this is by increasing, by adding, uh, in our case here, the fly ash the slab flow, it's, uh, it's reduced. Penetration is almost the same, not, uh, not a big difference, but you can look at the shape of the mix below on with uh, fly ash, it's much, much better than the, the, the mix with, without fly ash. That with fly ash and that one without fly ash. The next one here, we can see the effect of silicate fume, the mix with silicate fume below, and here this is without silicate fume. And we can see here, this is by and in silicate fume, 8% of silicate fume, the slug flow is go down as is expected, and also the penetration is go down. And if we are adding more fiber, this is also it's affecting the slug flow and penetration. Especially when we'll see later on when increasing three times. Now, what we have done in for the same mix, we can look at this is the, the link for. This is the estimated of the yield stress, and here this is the slum flow. And by increasing, in this case, this is by adding superplaster, uh, sorry, silicate fume here. In this case, we can see this is the increase of the yield stress as the slum flow is it's reduced. Effects of increasing the fibers from, as I said, we uh, increase it twice and three times, and increasing the fibers here, this is it's reducing the slum flow and also it reduces the, the penetrability. And it's due to, of course, there is more, fire, uh, more air and uh, uh, in inside of the mortar and also more intertwining of the fibers. And that's when there is kind of optimum of the, the total fiber you can use in the mortar A if you are looking for proper uh, extrudability. And you can see here, this is the shape of the, the mortar by increasing the, the, the fibers. Now, we look at also here the effect of superplaster. In, in this case, we are, we use SP, we use those days of superplaster one, we reduce it by, by half to look at because it was too much uh, fluid. And as expected, this is the reduce of the superplaster. It reduced the, the slum flow and it will be increased, of course, it reduced the, the penetrability. It's less workable and the penetration is less. And also here you can see the effect for when we have different uh, mixes. It's similar with uh, one percent. Uh, so, sorry, this is one 
1.8 kilograms of uh, fiber doubled and, and tripled three times. Now, the effects also here the same. This is for how it affects the yield stress. As I said, all this, the value of yield stress is measured with cylinder slump, and we, we calculate the yield stress, and we can see here if the slump flow is go down, the, the yield stress is go up. Here we, we look at the effect of two types of VME. The first one, it was based, based on diode and gum, and VME, uh, v, uh, VM2, it's based on nanoclade. And we can see uh, in this case, it's VME it was very, very uh, stiff, mixed quickly with the slump flow is go down. And nanoclade, it's the, the slump and the, it's lower than the, than the reference. If you look at that one to that one, and also the penetration here, this is it's slightly higher, almost slightly lower, sorry, but that one it's dropped dramatically. And even when you see later with diotan cam, it was impossible after 15 or or 30 minutes to extrude this this mix. It was too too stiff because we lost quickly the workability. Now we look at here, this is also the, the same, estimated the the yield stress when we are using the type, different type of VME. And as I said, it's very important to, to select the type, the proper uh, type of VME you are going to use in order to keep your, uh, uh, the extrudability in the time. The opening time is very important. And that's the type is uh, very important affecting the, the fresh and the rheologic property of uh, 3D printing. Now, what we find out here, we have as I said, we are trying to use sample tests and also to find out some kind of correlation. And we have good correlation between the penetration and the slump flow. As penetration, if you are increasing the slump flow, the penetration is increased in both cases with different mixes here. This is with different uh, percentage of uh, fibers. And uh, on the right side, this is with and without silicate fume. And as I said, the penetration test is quite simple and also it gives us a good indication about the, uh, the 3D printing. Here also, this is a good correlation between slump flow and the yield stress. When the slump flow is go down, the yield, uh, sorry, the, well, the yield stress is go down, increase when the slump flow is reduced. And the most important thing also is the opening time. And that one is very important to look at. Every 15 minutes, we take the mix and we try to extrude it to look at how far we can use this, this mix. And you can see here, this is the mix with fly ash and that one without fly ash. And the fly ash stop here somewhere, so 60 minutes, and uh, with fly ash, it skip going. We can extrude it more. For the same here, this is uh, that one with silicate fume. With sil silicate fume, again, it's lower, but it stop here. This is around 45 minutes. We cannot extrude it far away and without it skip, it skip going. Now, the effect of the, the fiber and super classes are on the opening time. And here we can look at this is by increasing uh, the double the percentage of fiber or three times. That one is the, the first one. And uh, two times is not too bad. And when we are adding three times, it was uh, difficult to extrude this mix. It was only, only once, and after 15 minutes, it was impossible. Now, reducing as expected, reducing superclasses, that one is more, more workable, and superclasses are it's, it's still almost uh, lower in the opening time compared with more uh, dosage of superclasses. Now, for VME, it's of course, this is, you can see here, different type of VME. This is, that's the, the reference mix. Uh, with nanoclay, it was good mix. We can go almost one hour. But with diatom cam, it was stopped from the beginning. Just we extruded it once, and after 15 minutes, it was impossible. From this result, we try to develop a curve where we can see this is the, the opening time, the time versus estimated yield stress. And we try to find out where is the zone where we can do the 3D printing. And we can, when our mixes, it's here, the, the, the red zone here. If you go further here, we will have more surface defect and also there is risk of the drainage and the mix it's uh, because it's too stiff. If you go here, this is a, when you have lower uh, yield stress, you have more risk of the drainage and because our mix is fluid, in this case we cannot have better mix for 3D printing. 
also we cast some different tail, different color to look at how it's affecting the weight of the age, the height of the, our specimen. If we done two two layers here, and it's almost the high, it's almost the same, and uh, 13, 13, and we, when we cast four layers, you can see here we have, this is almost, it's reduced from 13 to 10. And that's mean the texotropy and the yesterday in the time, it's very uh, important, as it's mentioned by uh, some uh, presenter before. Now, at the end, we, our recommendation in this mixes, and we, we find out this is to have better 3D printing. This is the spread, the slab flow, which should be between 155 to 235. Opening time, we managed to have until uh, 100 minutes. And the yet stress, the estimated yet stress is between 600 to 1050. And the penetration, it was between 20 to 39. I would like to finish with this slide, which I took it uh, last final week in Copenhagen at the airport. And this is, you can see here, this is that publicity to visit the Copenhagen Zoo. And here, the, you can see the photo, in fact, here, this is, it's in 2D. But if you take photo here, this is, you can, it's visual illusion, it's 3D versus 2D. That's, that's my last slide. I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you. Very good presentation. And I think, um, I like the idea that you did it with fibers. Because in most applications with 3D printing, we will need fibers. Because the right skin, especially by itself, material is very brittle. Now, you did it with polypropylene. We also have very good experience with 2D extrusion with PVA fibers. Okay. And we were able to get almost a screen hardening response mm -hmm. with, because PVA fiber has a better bond. Uh, I also want to ask you what kind of nano clay you used. In, in this case, it was Actigen. Actigen. Okay. Yeah. That's what we had good at. Yeah. It was much better than uh, yeah. that, uh, to the other, the other one. Uh, very extensive work. Uh, my uh, question is on phenomena such as drainage. Uh, you're using direct ink writing or extrusion for this system, right? So, on phenomena like drainage, what are your thoughts on the size dependency on nozzle uh, size and geometry of your extrusion system? Uh, do you think those have an impact on um, where you observe drainage versus? Yeah, of course. Where it's you observe those in terms of your material block. Yeah, the drainage, of course, is dependent as you extrude it, the, the shape, the, if you take circular, if you take rectangular, and also the pressure. If you pressure, if you apply the pressure quickly, you can see it's blocked and you are more drained. It's of course it depends your system you are you are using definitely. And if you have some, if you I I can give you this is the, the this work it was published last June. We have two papers on that one. One it was done by polypropylene and the other one is one done by flux, even it's natural fibers. Thank you very much.